With so much attention on the COVID-19 pandemic, there is a lot of information going around in the media and on the internet. And that means there are lots of chances for people to get incorrect information. We wanted to take a few minutes to share some of the myths and facts we have heard. Myth number one, study participants will be exposed to SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 as part of the study. False. That type of study design is known as a challenge study. The vaccines and antibodies that we are testing are not made with the real virus, so they cannot cause an infection or illness. We are 100% sure that a vaccine or antibody cannot give anyone COVID-19. Our studies are called randomized, blinded, and placebo-controlled studies. That's a mouthful. I'll try to explain it to you. First of all, not everyone in our studies will get the vaccine or antibody. Some people will get a placebo. A placebo does not contain the study vaccine or antibody. Placebos are usually sterile salt water. Using a placebo for comparison in a study is what makes the study placebo controlled. When someone joins one of our studies, whether they get the vaccine or the placebo is completely random, like flipping a coin or rolling dice. This is what makes the study randomized. The same would be true for someone in an antibody study. Whether they will get the study antibody or placebo is completely random. We have no say in what people get. In fact, the study team won't even know what each participant gets, and neither will the participant themselves. This is what makes the study blinded. Almost everyone involved in the study, even study staff members, are blinded to what the participants get. Don't worry though, everyone will eventually find out. Depending on how the study goes, it could take a few months to a couple of years. Randomized, blinded, placebo-controlled studies are the best way to find out if a study vaccine or antibody works. Here's why. The people who join our studies are often more likely than most other people to be exposed to the virus. This is just by simply living their daily lives. They are more at risk of getting the virus because of things like the kinds of jobs they have, their health, age, housing, and access to health care. Unfortunately, we know that some people in our studies will get sick with COVID-19. We will be keeping track of who does. When the study is far enough along, we will see if there is a big enough difference between how many of those people got the vaccine or antibody and how many got the placebo. If there are fewer people who get sick in the group that got the vaccine or antibody than in the group that got the placebo, then we will know that the vaccine or antibody works. Our goal is always to keep people safe and healthy, but in a pandemic, we know that there is always a chance that people will get sick. But because of randomized, blinded, placebo-controlled studies, we will never have to expose people to the virus on purpose to find out if the study vaccines or antibodies are working. Myth number two, joining a preventive COVID-19 vaccine or antibody study is like being a guinea pig, false. Unlike guinea pigs, people can choose whether or not they want to join a study. If a person thinks they are interested, they can talk with the study staff. All of the participating study clinics take great care to make sure people understand the study fully before they decide whether or not to join. It is critical that participants have all of the information about the study so they are able to make an informed decision about participating. Study staff will give people plenty of time to ask questions and people can talk with their friends, family, and other people they trust before they make a decision. This process is called informed consent, and it ensures that they understand all of the risks and benefits of being in a study. Volunteers are also reminded that they may leave a study at any time without losing any of their rights. Our studies follow U.S. federal regulations on research, as well as international ethical standards and any other requirements of the countries where our research is being done. There are rules for doing research, and we are committed to following them. Myth number three, Western scientists are unfairly using people in developing countries to test preventive COVID-19 vaccines and antibodies. False. In order to find a vaccine or antibody that works in all kinds of people, it is necessary to evaluate them in all kinds of people. 
This is especially true for groups of people that have been hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. Protecting the well-being of people who join our studies is a huge responsibility. We do our best to follow the highest ethical standards. We do these studies in collaboration with local scientists, researchers, and community representatives. There is oversight by ethics and regulatory groups in each country. Many studies are done in Sub-Saharan Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, and South America at the same time and we follow the same procedures and international standards no matter where the study takes place. We want to include people who are more likely to be exposed to the virus and COVID-19 by living their daily lives. This means that we do our studies in areas that have been hardest hit by the pandemic. Myth number four, a person has to be infected with SARS-CoV-2 to be in a preventive COVID-19 vaccine or antibody study, false. The vaccines and antibodies being tested are products designed to prevent someone from getting sick. So we want to enroll volunteers who do not have COVID-19. There are other scientists that are doing studies of treatments that doctors could use for people who already have COVID-19. Fact number five, licensed vaccines have an excellent track record of safety, true. While it is true that vaccines often have side effects, just like all other medical interventions, the side effects of a vaccine are typically temporary and people describe them as mild to moderate. These side effects can include having a sore arm where the injection was given, a low fever, chills, a headache, nausea, feeling tired, or muscle aches and pains. The side effects usually go away after a couple of days. A common myth is that vaccines can cause autism. There have been many studies that have proven this is not true. There was a British doctor who published study results linking vaccines and autism, but it was later discovered that his data was fake. Because of this, he was stripped of his license to practice medicine. Vaccines are one of the top public health tools we have, second only to having a clean water supply. They help to protect not only the person who gets vaccinated, but the community as well. Myth number six, COVID-19 is like the seasonal flu, false. Some people who get SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, do have flu-like symptoms. COVID-19 currently has a higher death rate than the flu, and scientists think that COVID-19 is more contagious than the flu. In the United States, the Centers for Disease Control recommends that everyone aged six months and over get a flu shot every year. Fact number seven, you can give SARS-CoV-2 to someone even if you do not have symptoms. True. Scientists have found that people who have SARS-CoV-2 but have no symptoms can still pass the virus to others. Having the virus but having no symptoms is called being asymptomatic. In fact, people who have the virus seem to pass the virus to others most often before they show any signs and symptoms themselves. Myth number eight, the prolonged use of medical masks causes oxygen deficiency or CO2 intoxication, false. Wearing a mask for a long time does not cause oxygen deficiency. When people wear masks properly, Carbon dioxide does not build up to make them feel intoxicated. Wearing a mask helps to stop the spread of droplets from your mouth and nose to others. If your mask feels damp, you should change it and wear a fresh one. Scientists recommend that people wear cloth masks, including homemade ones, to help prevent giving the virus to other people. Myth number nine, you can believe everything you read on the internet about preventing COVID-19. False. There is lots of information on the internet and lots of it is not true. Let's clear the air about some of the rumors we have heard. First, gargling with warm salt water can make a sore throat feel better, but it has no effect on SARS-CoV-2. Vinegar doesn't do anything either. Next, Although garlic is known to be a healthy food that has some antimicrobial properties, there is no evidence that eating garlic protects people against COVID-19. 
Drinking alcohol also does not protect against COVID-19. And drinking too much alcohol can be dangerous. How about the weather? Being in hot or cold climates does not protect you against COVID-19. The virus spreads in all climates. And finally, inhaling steam from boiled eucalyptus leaves might feel good, but it doesn't get rid of COVID-19. Cleansing yourself or your environment with sage, cedar, and other smudges, drinking traditional medicinal teas, and steaming with cedar and other medicines are things that may be beneficial for your environment and your spiritual and physical well-being, but these practices don't get rid of COVID-19. Check with your trusted traditional healer and your medical doctor to identify the best practices to ensure your health and well-being. As you can see, there are many myths around SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. We encourage you to do some research to find out more and don't assume that everything you read online is a fact. Look for trustworthy sources like your doctor, your local health department, the United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and the World Health Organization. You can also check out our website at www.preventcovid.org for answers to many of the most common questions.